Less than a week ago, I did a short on this particular screwdriver. What makes this screwdriver unique is it has a pin located right at the start of the handle. That extra little pin allows you to make a loop at the end of your wire very quickly and very easily. That video has done pretty well and there has been a ton of comments, questions, and suggestions and I would like to take a few minutes to do kind of a follow-up video. We're going to talk about this screwdriver just a little bit and discuss why it's made the way it is. And we're also going to talk about some all too common myths about receptacles. There there were plenty of comments about electricians stating that they use an impact, but there were also plenty of comments that said they prefer a hand screwdriver so they can feel how tight they have the screw. Some people have said despite Klein's instructions, you need to take the wire and take it around the shaft, but with my experience, that makes the loop way too big. Probably the most comments I see in a video is if this is designed for electrical use, why is the screwdriver not insulated? The quick and dirty answer is, well, we don't require insulated screwdrivers in a lot of different tasks that we're doing in the electrical field. Technically, when working on an outlet or switch, you should have the electricity turned off. You should not be working with live electricity. An insulated screwdriver looks like this. The handle and the shaft is insulated from the metal. This way, if you were to be working in a situation and accidentally bump the shaft, against some live electricity, you will not get shocked. Depending on the job, the area of the country you live in, the local codes, what you're working on, these may or may not be required. And the screws on most receptacles and or switches, well, they're kind of a hybrid. They work extremely well with what is called a Robertson bit. They also have a slot cut all the way across so you can use a regular screwdriver as well. And if you look really closely opposite of that long groove, there's also some little tiny grooves on the corner of that Robinson hole so a Phillips screwdriver will also fit. To put it simply, the screws have been designed to work for a Robertson, a regular screwdriver, or a Phillips. Now that doesn't mean that everything is perfect. A Phillips doesn't fit it all that well. A regular screwdriver does work very well. However, if you're an electrician, you're probably going to use a Robertson bit because a regular screwdriver wants to slip back and forth. So it takes more time to line the screwdriver up. But the Robertson bit fits very well and you can place it where it needs to be very quickly. There is also some hybrid tips on the market. There's some ECX bits made by Milwaukee and a variant of other flavors that also fit. Another set of comments that I keep seeing is why don't you use the tips of the wire strippers because they have a pair of pliers on it to bend and make that loop. Well you obviously can do that and there were many commenters that said you can poke the wire through the hole of the pliers and give it a bend and that will make your loop as well and obviously that works too. And some receptacles even have a little nifty feature built into them. There's a little wire catch right here in the corner and what that does is it allows you to take your wire put it in place like this, and then pull it around the screw, and now you have your perfect loop and you don't need a wire bender. Speaking of built-in features, everybody and their brother had to tell me that there's a wire stripper built into the receptacle. I used this receptacle in the video. Note, there's no wire stripper. In fact, when I went to the hardware store to purchase a few receptacles, I purposely looked for one that had a wire stripper and it took me a little bit of time to find them. The only brand that I could see that had that built in was Eaton. Now, I don't know if Eaton has a patent on that or not, but they seem to be the only ones that have the wire stripper built into the outlet. The way those are supposed to work is you take the wire, you shove it into the slot like this, you give the outlet a couple of twists, or the wire, whichever you can twist, give it a little bit of a pull, and it will strip the wire. I will say these are kind of a pain in the butt and that's probably why most people don't use this feature. Now the back of the outlet has a nifty little feature that I personally don't like to use and people call this backstabbing. There is typically a little tool built in that tells you how far to skin the wire back and these holes are where you push the wire in and it's called backstabbing. I'm not a fan of this type of connection because I really don't think the pinch that's holding this wire in place is all that great. When given the opportunity, I always use the screw to tighten the wire onto the fixture. And that brings me to a couple final conclusions and comments. Not all outlets are created equally. Both of these are Eaton outlets, but the one on the right, this is your typical 75 cent outlet that you can find in the big box stores. The one on the left is considered a spec or commercial grade outlet. These these are built a lot better than the cheap ones that you can buy for 75 cents. However, this particular outlet costs $5. They are my favorite outlets to use because they have a feature called side wiring. Side wiring works very similar to backstabbing, except it has a whole lot better of a friction hold than the backstabbing feature. You don't have to put a loop in the wire. You can just shove it into the back of the outlet and tighten the terminal. Once that screw is tight, the wire is not going anywhere. And if you wanted to go to the traditional route and still use the looping technique, 
you can. The grounding lug on this also has another little nifty feature. There's a hole right there allowing you to take the ground wire, put it through the hole, wrap it around the screw, and it made the loop for you. You just need to tighten the lug down and you're good to go. So hopefully we answered all of the comments and questions that you had, and hopefully this video wasn't too boring. If you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos. At the very least, you might be entertained.